Ooh, dry weather. I think I can start working on these sails a little bit. So I've got my dimensions pretty much worked out. I just need to make this mold. I have a piece of sheet metal for this. So I need to cut the board that'll go there and define the curve of the sheet metal. So in a nutshell, all I need to do right now is find a board and cut a curve into it. Now this curve will define the curvature of the sails. So I need to think about that a little bit and make sure it's good. If I were to maximize this for sailing efficiency, the sails should be able to, to change their curvature. However, I'm making hard sails. They're not going to be able to change that. So I'm just going to have to pick something. And I think I'm going to pick it on factors other than the wind. They'll be curved some. I don't want to curve them that much, though, because uh, I'm going to have solar panels on here. And if it's curved a lot, this side could be in shade when this side's in sun. You know, kind of like my hands are right now. This side's all shady. Uh, but if I keep the sails pretty, with a pretty shallow curve, the solar panels will roughly be aiming in the same direction. If they're off by a few degrees, that's fine. I do want to curve it enough that I get the strength, like the rigidity of the curve. Because if it's too flat, it'll it'll just flex too easily. My sails need to be nine feet across, which is about 2.7 meters. And I need to figure out this height. Like how far from here to here, how much curve. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Six, I think six inches, which is 15 centimeters, is about as shallow as I'd want to make it. You know, I need to draw that to scale somewhere. There's a blank piece. Here's the back of this. All right, 2.7 meters, we're going to draw 27 centimeters. So we're dividing everything by 10, right? 27 divided by 2, 13 and a half. I need to go one and a half centimeters up from that to get the 15 centimeters. I'm going to have to draw a graph of part of a circle to get it onto the board because the board's going to be way too, the curve on the board is going to be way too big to use like a string and a pencil technique. So, okay, what's the equation of a circle? Uh, I know Pythagoras. Um, got a triangle and that length is x and this is y and this is your hypotenuse x squared plus y squared equals a hypotenuse squared now if I make this the radius of a, cir radius of a circle and just make that r that's going to be a constant not a variable anymore to be to make this into a circle let me just rearrange these a little uh, well, I can just do it right now. Minus y squared, square root of that. All right. So x equals r squared minus y squared square rooted. My calculator should be able to handle that. Oh, and the way I just did that, I want to draw my graph this way. Yeah, it'll be fine. And I'll make uh, y marks and then figure out how far each x is out from, I don't know. I guess I'll go every centimeter here, and then on the board it'll be every 10 centimeters. All right, I'm gonna do some calculations here. Well, let's put a mark every centimeter while we have this stuff out. All right, I know where this point on the circle is, I know where this point on the circle is, and I know where the middle is. I know where another point is, but I only need two points of the circle and the middle. And I can figure out the radius by doing some fancy algebra with this. Okay. Okay, so when x is the radius, y is 0. So I'm going to define the center of the circle as 0, 0, somewhere over there. I'll just put it here, even though it's way over there somewhere. Okay, when y is 0, x is the radius. Now let's figure out that other spot. When y is 13.5, uh, 
the x is the radius minus one and a half. All right, so x is r minus 1.5. OK. All right, so when y is 0, x is the radius. When y is 13.5, x is r minus 1 and a half. x is 1, r minus 1.5. Uh, equal to r squared minus 13.5 squared. Right. Okay. Oh, I backed myself into a square root situation. Ooh, I should have just left this as x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Yeah, I just figured out from that. Okay, right. Pretty sure I can work that out. Oh, this is messy. This is actually how I used to do math exams. I didn't attend class, so I just figured it out on the spot, which my teachers always loved. Okay, the radius equals 61.5 centimeters for this. All right, my silly equation here. 61.5 squared is that minus the y squared, y is going to be 13.5 squared equals, and then, oh, I already know the answer. That's going to be 60. Square root that, 60. All right, let's see how that works. That makes this 60, and this 61.5, and that is in fact supposed to be one, and oh my gosh, it worked! I can't believe it. And yes, I could have just opened AutoCAD or SolidWorks and drawn a circle and put the points on, but oh, it's, it's, I'd rather do the math. Because what if I don't have that stuff one day? What if I need to know how to calculate it by hand? Oh, I fixed my centimeter mark so they're a centimeter off from the zero point, not from the end, so it's easier to calculate. So this, if y is 1, that's that. If y is 2, that's 61.5 squared minus 2 squared, which is 4. I can do that in my head. Square rooted, 61.46. Oh, I went rounded that one. It should be 47, not 46. Okay. All right, now I just need to measure from here out each of these numbers. Minus 60, because this line is already at 60, because that's a 60 point. So 1.49 centimeters. All right. Now, obviously, in this drawing, I'm I have a wasted amount of precision. I can't measure down to the tenth of a millimeter. However, the bigger one will be ten times the size, so the precision will be relevant because it'll only be down to millimeters then. Oops. Yeah, close enough. That's my rough curve. And it'll be symmetrical on the other side. Nah, it's not bad. I think that's pretty good. I don't know. I might want to curve it more. I better draw the other side. I don't know. That's a pretty shallow curve. I think I want to curve a little more than that. That's definitely not going to be a problem for the solar panels. I mean, they'll just be bent a tiny amount. I don't think I'm going to get enough strength from the curvature with this, though. So maybe curve down to... Alright, I just kind of drew a rough line below that one. I think that's what I want it to be. Alright, I think I'm pretty happy with that curve. That's a difference of 2.2 centimeters so it'll be 22 centimeters in over the nine foot thing all right so the distance there 22 centimeters from there to there so that means i need a board that's significantly wider than 22 centimeters or i might have to splice a couple together so this doesn't get too skinny because this bottom board is going to go down here 
and it needs to keep its shape. Where's my metric tape measure? Nope. Hopefully somewhere in here I've got a board wide enough. Maybe that one. Nah. Oh good, I found my metric tape measure. Alright, those ones are not long enough. These ones are long enough, but they're not wide enough. Don't! Well, I could use one of my floorboards up here. This one looks like it's in decent, decent shape still. It's got a crack at the end. I don't need the whole end. Probably from about there over. Eh, one might be alright. 22 centimeters puts me there. Well, that's kind of pushing it, but it's probably as thick as I'm going to get. Alright, that'll keep any kids from falling in until I find a big enough board to fit the whole thing. Alright, 9 feet, 275 centimeters right there. I want to try to keep the best part of the board. So if I start the cut here, it's going to curve around. This will be all right. I want to make sure I avoid this knot, which is fine. If I start down here, it'll... Yeah. All right. I think that's good. And this is going to be the skinniest part. No knots there. Right. All right. Let me cut it right there. generally worth it to spend some extra time getting a mold really good because it's going to be used for so many other pieces. All right, I just sanded that with 100 grit. Kind of real quick. That's good enough. Jamie, didn't you just say something about how it's worth it to put extra effort into molds? Yeah, but that was before sandpaper was involved. Anyway, most of these little lines will be filled in with wax as I go over anyway and this is just cosmetic anyway. What I really need to be good is the curve. So uh, I guess let's draw that on there. I just double checked the length of the solar panels and they're 138 centimeters long. So two of them need to fit in here. So that's 276, yeah, 276 centimeters. And I've only got 275. However, of course this will be curved. So it's like 278 or so. All right, it'll fit. Now I've got to mark every 10 centimeters. Oh crap, which one's the middle one? Oh, this one, this one's the middle one. All right, middle one. What's your measurement? second there I thought I did all that math for nothing. This makes the cleanest cuts. I'm gonna need full concentration on this one so I'm turning off the camera. All right I've got the board propped up off the ground with a few boards that I can cut in they don't matter. Now I just need to... All right do you want to make this cut? No. Good. All right. Boy Joe I think I got it. The wood started binding on the blade as I was going. So I had to take a hand off and stuff this in as I was going. Looks like I got it pretty good. Yeah. Oh, nice work. I think this part's gonna be thick enough that it's not gonna need any reinforcement here too. That's a good thing. Yeah, nice work. Alright, now I need to nail a piece of sheet metal along here, and then the other end to here, and I've got my mold. Then I can wax it and use it. I'm not going to put it together here though, because it's going to make a pretty big thing. It's going to be hard to move. 
So I'll put it together on site, which is over there.